Welcome to this video series studying crude oil. Crude oil is an incredibly valuable mixture of chemicals which fuels the energy demands of the modern world. But it's also the source of greenhouse gas emissions when it's combusted as a fuel, resulting in global warming. In this video series, we will study how crude oil is formed, extracted and processed for use as fuel, and discuss the future of this substance in a changing world. Our journey begins with the formation of crude oil, an ancient biomass, mainly plankton. When this plankton dies, it falls to the sea floor and becomes buried in mud. Over millions of years, it changes into crude oil. Millions of years later, humans use advanced extraction techniques, such as this oil rig shown here, to extract the crude oil from rocks. Vast oil tankers then come to collect this oil and take it to land. The oil is delivered to pipelines which take it to fractional distillation plants. The role of a fractional distillation plant is to separate the crude oil into all of the useful fuels that it contains, so they can be used by different types of engine and power plant. In lesson one we're going to explore crude oil, hydrocarbons and alkanes. To begin with, let's get an idea of what crude oil is. As I've said before, it's a finite resource, which means it'll eventually run out, and it's found inside rocks. And it's the remains of ancient biomass, that means the matter or the bodies of living things, which consisted mainly of plankton that became buried in mud. Over millions of years, the biomass of the ancient marine organisms becomes trapped inside these rocks and slowly changes into the substance which is crude oil. However, crude oil has a definition. The definition of crude oil is that it's a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons. And you can see some images of hydrocarbons right here. Every single one of these molecules is a hydrocarbon. Let's now explore what a hydrocarbon is. Hydrocarbons are compounds that are made from hydrogen and carbon atoms only. We can see in the images below that we have compounds made of both carbon and hydrogen, but no other atoms, and therefore we can call them hydrocarbons. Let's now have a look at how we can construct hydrocarbons and draw them for ourselves. The one thing that you need to remember is that they only contain carbon and hydrogen atoms. But carbon must always form a total of four covalent bonds, which are represented by the lines in the diagrams. Carbon must bond a total of four times, no more and no less, and those bonds must either be to other carbon atoms, or if there are no carbon atoms left to bond to, to hydrogen atoms. Let's look at the first example with the formula CH4. This one's name is methane. We'll begin by drawing a carbon atom, because it contains only one. Now, because it contains only one carbon atom, I can't bond to any more carbons, but I have to make up that total of four by bonding to four hydrogens. One, two, three, and four. We've now satisfied the rules for the bonding in carbon, and as I said, this line here, each one of those is what we call a single covalent bond. Let's now have a look at a hydrocarbon with the formula C2H6. This has the name ethane. We have two carbons, so we need to draw those. And to begin with, we're going to bond our carbons in a line. There are no more carbons to bond these carbons I've already drawn to. So therefore, I'm going to need to make up the total of four using hydrogen atoms. I can see this carbon's already made one out of four bonds, so it needs to make three more. One, two, three. And the fourth already having been made, this carbon now has four bonds. But we can see this carbon over here needs to make its total up to four, so we're gonna use hydrogens to do that. One, two, three, and the fourth was already there. So here we have ethane. Let's now have a look at C3H8. This one takes the name propane. We'll start off by drawing our three carbon atoms, and then we'll bond them in a line. Now this carbon here still needs to make three more bonds to have a total of four, 
but they must be to hydrogens. One, two, and three. We can see this carbon in the middle here already has two bonds, so it only needs to make two more to make its total up to four. One, two, and there's the third and the fourth. This carbon on the end here has only made one bond so far, so needs to make three. One, two, and three. Next up, we're gonna have a look at C4H10. This one takes the name butane. To begin with, we'll draw our four carbons in a line. Then we'll join them up with covalent bonds. This carbon's made one bond, so it needs to make three more to the hydrogens. This carbon's already made two, so it makes two more. This carbon's already made two, so it makes two more. And this carbon's only made one, so it makes three more bonds. And there we have butane. Let's now consider what each of the hydrocarbons that we've just drawn have in common. You'll notice methane, ethane, propane and butane, their names all end in ane. You may have also noticed that the carbon to carbon bonds where they exist, for example in ethane, propane and butane, are all single covalent bonds. In other words, they all look like this and they don't look like this. This here would be called a double covalent bond. Next up, their formulae all abide by a general formula, where it's CnH2n plus 2. I'll talk more in a moment about what that means. But these two features, the fact that their carbon to carbon bonds are all single covalent bonds, and their formulae all abide by CnH2n plus 2's general formula, makes them a class of hydrocarbon, a subcategory if you will, called alkanes. And that's why their names all end in ane. So these are the two features of alkanes. Let's now have a look at what that CnH2n plus 2 means. We call this the general formula of alkanes. And in order to be classified as an alkane, as a hydrocarbon that you could call an alkane, then it must abide by this general formula, CnH2n plus 2. What do these numbers and letters mean? Let's have a look. N here represents the number of carbon atoms. It could be any number you want. It could be two, four, seven, whatever you want that to be. 2N plus two tells us that the number of hydrogen atoms is twice the number of carbon atoms and another two. Let's have a look at an example of this being used. What's the formula of an alkane with six carbon atoms? We write the general formula of alkanes. Then we decide that N is six, therefore H is two times six plus two. As we see here, make sure you multiply before you add the two, and therefore the formula of this particular alkane is C6H14. Let's now have a look at another example. We're being asked now, is this compound an alkane? The first thing you needed to remember about alkanes is that all of the carbon to carbon bonds must be single bonds. In other words, there must be one line between each of the carbon atoms. This satisfies that criteria, so it could be an alkane, but it also needs to satisfy the CnH2n plus 2 general formula. Its formula is C5H12 when we count all of the carbons and all of the hydrogen atoms around it. And we can see that 12 is 2 times 5 plus another 2, so therefore yes, it does abide by the general formula CnH2n plus 2, and therefore this is an alkane because it satisfies both the single covalent bonds between carbon atoms criteria and the general formula of CnH2n plus 2 criteria. Let's now have a look at how the naming system for alkanes works. You may have heard in English lessons before the idea of a prefix and a suffix. In other words, the start of a word and the end of a word. When we name alkanes, the prefix is determined by the number of carbon atoms in the alkane, which you can see as being the number after the carbons here in this case it's one because no number is written. 
The suffix, because they're alkanes, is always ain. Let's have a look at our first example with only one carbon atom. One carbon atom give us, gives us the prefix meth, and the suffix is always ain, so we get methane. Two carbon atoms gives us the prefix eth, suffix ain, name is ethane. Three carbon atoms gives us the prefix prop, suffix ain, name propane. Four carbon atoms gives us the prefix bute, suffix ain, name butane. Five carbon atoms, pent, ain, pentane. Six carbon atoms, hex, ain, hexane. Seven carbon atoms, hept, ain, heptane. Eight carbon atoms, oct, ain, octane. Nine carbon atoms, non, ain, nonane. And ten carbon atoms, dec, ain, decane. You can see that after five, it becomes quite logical because it's basically like the shapes that you learn in maths. However, the first four are a little bit different to what you've probably remembered. The first five you need to learn and remember their names and their formula. Let's summarise what we've learnt so far. Crude oil. Its definition is a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons. And remember, it's formed by the remains of ancient biomass consisting mainly of plankton that was buried in mud. And we find this finite resource, meaning it's going to run out, in rocks. In the crude oil, we find the mixture of hydrocarbons. Let's define a hydrocarbon. Compounds made from hydrogen and carbon atoms only. Remember when we construct the hydrocarbons, each carbon forms four bonds, that is covalent bonds, to either carbon or hydrogen atoms. Remember that some of our hydrocarbons can be called alkanes. And alkanes must satisfy two criteria. All the CC bonds need to be single covalent bonds, and the formula must abide by the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. And remember when we name them, the prefix is decided by the number of carbon atoms, and the suffix is always ain. Now I want you to do a progress check. If you could have a go at these questions, and then pause the video just beforehand, come back to the video and see how you did. Let's now have a look at the answers. In the first question, we're asked to complete the sentence, and this is a description of crude oil, but it's not its definition. Remember that crude oil is a finite resource, meaning it's going to run out, and it's found in rocks. And it's the remains of ancient biomass consisting mainly of plankton that was buried in mud. The definition of crude oil is a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons. The definition of a hydrocarbon is compounds made from hydrogen and carbon atoms only. The two features a hydrocarbon must have to be classified as an alkane are as follows. The CC bonds are all single covalent bonds. Its formula abides by the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. We now need to name and draw the first five alkane hydrocarbons, those with 1 to 5 carbon atoms. This is what you need to know for your GCSE. You do need to learn these. Methane, CH4, bonding shown here. Ethane, C2H6, bonding shown here. Propane, C3H8, bonding shown here. Butane, C4H10, here's your bonding. And pentane, C5H12. The general formula of alkanes you should have got as CnH2n plus 2. If my alkane had 20 carbon atoms, what's its formula? Well, C would be 20, and H would be twice 20 plus 2. So we should get C20H42. Next up, we need to explain why this hydrocarbon is not an alkane. You'll notice here that this C to C bond is actually a double covalent bond. And to be classified as an alkane, all your C to C bonds must be single covalent bonds. 
You'll also notice if you work out its formula that it doesn't abide by the general formula C and H2N plus 2. I've said that here, and I've explained actually, if we found out its formula C3H6, that would give it a different general formula of CnH2n. For those of you studying triple chemistry, you should know that that's the general formula of alkenes, not alkanes. If you're studying combined science, don't worry too much about that fact for now. In the final question, we had to complete the structure of hexane. This isn't one of the ones you need to know, but it's an exercise in completing the bonding. We'll start off by bonding all of our carbon atoms with single C to C bonds. We'll then add the correct number of hydrogens to each carbon. This carbon's only made one bond so far, so needs to make three more. This carbon's made two, so needs to make two more. The same applies for these three carbons. And then finally, the end carbon has only made one bond so far, so needs to make three more. Thank you very much for watching that video. I hope you found it useful. The next one will be on fractional distillation of crude oil, so make sure you move on to that next. See you next time.